Hello, welcome to our class on Jewish law. Now we are studying the laws, the halachas of the three weeks and of Tisha B'Av. Uh, so let's continue where we left off yesterday. We're in, for those of you following along, we're using the Mishnah Berurah, and we're in Simon Tov Kuf Nun Aleph 551, and we're on Seif Tes Zayin, number 16. And we're learning the different restrictions that come up during the three weeks and the nine days, which is the time preceding Tisha B'Av, where we commemorate the destruction of the two temples in Jerusalem. Since it's a time when the temples were destroyed, this is a time of mourning. So as we get closer to Tisha B'Av, we have more uh, laws and more customs of mourning. There are those that have the custom not to take a shower from Rosh Chodesh until Tisha B'Av, so that's nine days, and there are some that don't take a shower for the just the week of Tisha B'Av. Like we mentioned yesterday, last time, there are different time periods of restrictions. We have first the three weeks that started on the 17th of Tammuz, which this year was July 6th. Then we have the nine days, which starts from Rosh Chodesh, which begins July 9th. That's when there are more severe restrictions. And then... We have the, finally the week of Tisha B'Av, which is starts July uh, twenty twenty third. So the Mechaber here, the Shulchan Aruch, is saying that some have the custom to not shower at all from Rosh Chodesh Av, and some have the shower to not custom uh, to not shower at all from just the week of Tisha B'Av, from that Saturday night until Tisha B'Av. The practice of Ashkenazi Jewry is to not shower on Rosh Chodesh. Uh, from Rosh Chodesh until Tisha B'Av. We'll discuss a little bit some of the details if someone's very uncomfortable and things like that when we get to the Mishnah Guru. But for now, let's continue with the Shulchan Aruch. And there are those that fast from the 17th of Tammuz until Tisha B'Av. They fast the days between during these three weeks. And we'll also see about that. So right now what we're reading actually is the Shulchan Aruch and the Ramah. The Mechaber is the code of Jewish law, and he, the Mechaber is the author for Sephardic Jews. The Ramah, which we're about to start, is the author of the code of Jewish law for Ashkenazic Jews. And they're printed together because the Ramah, who was an Ashkenazic rabbi, didn't want to make that there would be two codes of Jewish law in Judaism. So all he did was he printed addendums to the already existing code of Jewish law for Sephardim. What we're going to read after is the commentary of the Mishnah Rura. The Mishnah Rura was written by the Chabetz Chaim at the turn, around the turn of the last uh, century, 1900s. Okay, says the Ramah, Ulatzorich mitzvah shari. Now, even though one's not allowed to shower during the nine days, for a mitzvah he's allowed to. Ulachay nida rochetzes v'tolaz. A nida, a woman who's immersing herself in the mikvah, she is allowed to take a shower and go to the mikvah, because that's for a mitzvah. V'afil im tovelas Lyle Asar Ba'av, even if her night of Tefillah is the 10th of Av, right after Tisha B'Av, she could even shower the day before Tisha B'Av. If it's impossible for her to take a shower on the 10th of Av. This is the law also for a woman who's in her clean days, wearing white. She could wash a little bit the way she does during the rest of the year. Now here he says the reason that she's allowed to shower this woman who's going to the mikvah, is because she's not showering for enjoyment or washing for enjoyment, she's doing it for the mitzvah. Now the Ramah here, he says, the custom of Ashkenazic Jews. The custom of Ashkenazic Jews is not to shower, even with cold water, from Rosh Chodesh and on. So this year, 2023, that would be July 19th until July 27th, those nine days. These are very similar to the laws of mourning over a relative, because we're mourning for the temple. Even on the Shabbos before Tishbev, a person can only wash his face, his his head, his face, and his hands, and his legs, with cold water. Some are lenient to wash the head with uh, warm water. Uh, so someone who does this every Shabbos. So according to the strict letter of the law, a person should not shower at all during the nine days, and except on Erev Shabbos, he could use cold water to wash his hands, his feet, and his face, and and he could use hot water as like sham, a shampoo type of thing. Now let's see the Mishnah Brewer, and we'll discuss nowadays if there are any more leniencies. 
The Mishnah Brura Peiches says, "Shelo liyachotz ein lekamei dafilu b'tzoni yishli zar ulafu muter afilu b'chamad vafilu b'shavuos shachavot tishvu." He says, "If a person here, he adds, if a person has to shower for medical reasons, then he is allowed to shower even normally with hot water." Merush chodesh ve'im chal merush chodesh ve'erev shabbos azay muter liyachotz af kol gufo b'chamad kol mishirochotz tamin ve'erev shabbos lefot shabbos. He says, "Let's say this doesn't. This is not the case this year, but let's say the beginning of the nine days falls on Friday." Right? And it's a mitzvah to shower on Friday. So he says, if the beginning of the nine days falls on Erev Shabbos, on Friday, then you're allowed to shower normally if you're the type of person that showers every Shabbos. Nowadays, I feel like everyone showers every Shabbos. Now, we said there are those that have a custom to fast every day of the three weeks. A Torah scholar should not take on this stringency. Again, this is a stringency to fast during this time. It's not the letter of the law. So he says the reason a Torah scholar shouldn't fast during the three weeks is because he's going to end up learning less. A person is weaker, obviously, when he's not eating. So a Torah scholar who's doing very important things by studying Torah, he should not, he should not be fasting during the three weeks. And whatever he says, whatever comes to this type of stringency, a person has to weigh it if the benefits will outweigh the costs. Seems like nowadays there are very few people who would have the strength to fast every day during the three weeks. Tishabav, I the Kaman, okay. Lirchot's rare of Tishabav, Kedark of the Kaman, fine. Hoyel, Ken Ketanam Shishlem, Chatatim Beroshim, children that have scabs in their heads. No, Gim Lachim Beroshim. We wash their, wash their head during the nine days. Afilo Bitsonin, Hainu Kal Gufo, Avalpanav Yod of Raglov, Shari Lirchot's Bitsonin. Right, that's um, a person with this. This Mishabura was talking about that the custom is not right according to the letter of the law. The custom is that we don't wash it all, we don't shower it all during the nine days. And that means our entire body, but our but a person's face, his hands, and his feet, he's allowed to wash with cold water. Even Erev Shabbos, a person shouldn't shower. 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 He says, even if you're the type of person that always takes a shower on Erev Shabbos, then you still should not take a shower Erev Shabbos during the nine days. Well, in your tefillah, however, if you go to the mikvah, Hanoi glitvul b'chol Erev Shabbos muter. Umishim v'vatla l'pa'amim v'pnei tirda sasaka v'pnei atzina aser. Now he says, what about going to the mikvah? There's a mitzvah. Some people have the custom to go to the mikvah every week before Shabbos. So he says, if you're the type of person that goes every single week and never ever miss, misses, then you're allowed to go to the mikvah. But even this, even when he was lenient, that people could take a shower on Erev Shabbos uh, to, with, with, uh, with hot water, he says he still shouldn't use shampoo. Shows him efer. And he says also, besides those that are accustomed to washing themselves uh, every Friday, they can also are allowed to wash their hands, feet, hands and feet with hot water, somebody who does his Arab Shabbos. So most of us. So we can wash on Friday, we can take we can wash our Hands, feet, and face, and our heads, and our. We can wash our hair without shampoo on Erev Shabbos, on Friday during the nine days. Now, this is the Mishnah Brewer. So, according to the letter of the law, the way we just read it here, a person should really not be showering at all during the nine days, even before Shabbos. The only leniency we saw for Shabbos was just the uh, face, hands, uh, feet, and, uh, and hair. Now, however, there are many postkim nowadays that do say, that the only prohibition here is pleasure bathing. If you're bathing for enjoyment, you take a nice long hot shower, that's what you shouldn't be doing. However, there are, there are those postcom that say that if you're extremely sweaty and disgusting, and you're just trying to shower quickly to remove the sweat, that you are allowed to do that during the nine days. However, there are others, Rishon Mazaman Arbach, was not happy with this. He says, you know, the purpose of the nine days is to uh, is to feel uncomfortable because we're mourning the loss of the temple. So again, everyone, if you have a specific question about your specific situation, then you should definitely contact your halakhic authority, ask your rabbi if anyone is, wants to reach out to me. I'm more than glad to t- talk about it. But there are those to rely on if a person is taking a shower for cleanliness purposes to remove sweat 
and the like, and it's better to maybe take not, for sure don't take a long shower, don't like stay in there longer to enjoy yourself, and also maybe don't put it as hot as you usually do, just put the water so that it's comfortable, meaning so that it's not freezing, that would be uh, something to do. But definitely for those who want to, uh, and those whose neighbors don't mind, the, definitely according to the letter of the law, a person should not shower or bathe during the nine days. And with that, we finish Saif Tazayin, wishing everyone a great day.